there were multiple musical antiquities. Uh, this is part of uh, my key narratives series, uh, uh, as part of which is part of my uh, global music history micro lessons. There are several case studies that we can use to illustrate the fact that there were multiple musical antiquities, including ancient Greek music, ancient Chinese music, and ancient Egyptian music. In this micro lesson, I'll be using the case of Chinese music history. Uh, Chinese music history uh, is required in music higher education in China alongside Western music history, and I've taught uh, Chinese music history as a two-semester sequence since 2015. These are the resources which I uh, used in preparing this micro lesson and uh, they can also be found in the uh, description of this YouTube video. So how to use this video? It could be played in class uh, during a lesson on ancient Greek music if this is uh, a lesson uh, that's part of the undergraduate Western Music History Survey. It could be assigned to students to view before the class. Uh, it could be the basis of uh, student projects on the topic of multiple musical antiquities. A little bit about Chinese music history research in China. Uh, the most important uh, recent publication uh, is by Yang In Liu. Uh, his Ancient Chinese Music History was published in 1981. This was a 650,000 word publication. Uh, but even earlier in the 20th century, uh, we have research as well. In 1934, Wang Guangqi published his Chinese Music History. And there's a tradition of research uh, in music throughout Chinese uh, history. In ancient China, the history of the previous dynasty was recorded by the succeeding dynasty. Uh, so what was recorded uh, included policies related to music performance and music education. Uh, it, uh, it included schools of thought on music aesthetics and morality and the socio-political function of music. So there's a lot of interest now in global music history and that's, uh, and China is part of that. Uh, there was the transmission of music along the Silk Road since the 2nd century BCE when the Silk Road was established. Music and instruments from India, South Asia, Southeast Asia and Europe reached China. And Chinese music and instruments reached Korea, Japan and Vietnam. What I'm talking about in this micro lesson actually predates that. It predates the Silk Road and it predates the transmission of Chinese music to East and Southeast Asia. Uh, so in a way, when, when, what I'm talking about is a kind of local music history. And even after the Silk Road was established and even after Chinese music began to be transmitted to other parts um, of East Asia and Southeast Asia, there were still historical developments that took place primarily within China. And these uh, and I would say that uh, local music history uh, is something that we need to learn about as well. So uh, Chinese history is often said to uh, have a period of 5,000 years. And uh, the same thing is said about Chinese music history. Uh, both Chinese history in general and Chinese music history uh, uh, are described as having mythological origins. The concrete historical evidence related to uh, Chinese music history actually comes from the Shang Dynasty, uh, which is from the 16th uh, to 11th centuries BCE. Uh, so from then up to now, we have a period of around 37 centuries or four millennia. And uh, there's prehistorical uh, archaeological finds uh, also dating from uh, the 7th millennium BC, uh, BCE, uh, but I won't be uh, discussing that in this micro lesson. So the Shang and the Zhou dynasties, 
The Shang Dynasty was from around 1600 to 1046 BCE, and the Zhou Dynasty from 1046 to 221 BCE. One of the uh, most uh, famous uh, facts about the Shang Dynasty was that uh, there were um, uh, texts which were inscribed on oracle bones which have been preserved and uh, characters related to music have been found. So Chinese characters, meaning the Chinese words which are known as uh, ideograms. So uh, this is the word for or character for music. Uh, this is the word for drum and this is the word for chime. Uh, instruments from the Shang Dynasty have been preserved. Uh, the bells from that period were called Yong and uh, a large bell has been preserved weighing 66 kilograms and 0.67 me uh, and, and it's 0.67 meters uh, meter in height. Uh, and now we talk about the Zhou Dynasty. Um, there's a lot more information uh, about the uh, Zhou Dynasty and uh, one of the uh, interesting things is that even uh, though we're talking about the first millennium uh, BCE, even at the time there was this consciousness of new music versus ancient music. Um, ancient music uh, is sacred music with a, with a historical narrative that uh, was performed with male dancers, whereas new music referred to music that was for entertainment, that was more lively and varied, and was performed with mostly female dancers. Uh, the I Ching and Shi Jing are described as works of music um, in Chinese music history. Uh, they are actually uh, collections of song lyrics. So the I Ching is, uh, was made famous by uh, John Cage, uh, also known as the Book of Changes. Uh, so uh, it's a book that's used for divination and in the book there are uh, explanations for uh, abstract uh, characters and the explanations included verses that were actually song lyrics. The Shi Jing is uh, known as the classic of poetry or book of songs and it comprised folk, aristocratic and religious songs. Uh, one of the most characteristic instruments uh, from the Zhou Dynasty is the Bian Zhong, which is a bronze chime bells set. One of the most important uh, Bian Zhong that uh, have been excavated is the 65 bell Bian Zhong excavated from the tomb of the Marquis Yi of the state of Zheng. And so in Chinese, this is known as the Zheng Hou Yi uh, Bian Zhong. Uh, which was, uh, and the tomb was found in the Hubei uh, province. Uh, the Marquis was interred in 433 BCE. Now the Zheng Hou Yi Bian Zhong uh, had five octaves in uh, a seven tone scale. But the earliest record of uh, seven tone scales comes later from 273 CE. Uh, and so uh, the, we know that uh, from the historical record, what we know is that uh, music during the Zhou Dynasty is pentatonic. Uh, in the middle three octaves of the Zheng Hou Yi Bian Zhong, 12 semitones can be played because each bell can create two tones. One tone is a minor third or a major third higher. The largest bell is 204, kilograms or 1.53 and 1.53 uh, meters uh, in height. And here uh, we'll listen uh, very briefly uh, to a performance on uh, the Bian Zhong. This is 
an arrangement of a Chinese zither gu qin, gu, uh, gu qin piece from uh, 8th century CE. Uh, this is just a short excerpt. If you would like to listen to the entire piece, you can uh, follow the link uh, in the description for this YouTube video. Now there were uh, inscriptions uh, on the bell uh, on the bells of the Zhenghui Bian Zhong, and uh, what was found. Uh, uh, what we find in these uh, inscriptions is descriptions of the music theory systems, uh, the different music theory systems in different regions of China. Uh, this indicated that there were regional variations. Uh, during the uh, from 475 to 221 BCE, which is the known as the Warring States period of the Zhou Dynasty. Uh, diverse traditions from different regions began to interact. Through political alliances and eventually conquest, the number of separate sovereignties went from more than a hundred to eventually just one uh, during the Qin dynasty which succeeded the Zhou dynasty. Uh, this was a process of cultural unification. Um, in addition to political unification, scholars wrote canons and commentaries to classify and harmonize diverse cultural products. This led to the highly syncretic philosophy and aesthetics of the Han dynasty, which succeeded the Qin dynasty. And now uh, I'll talk about the music theory of the pentatonic scale. Um, the five notes of the pentatonic scale are uh, are known as Gong Shang Jue Zhi Yu. And this uh, nomenclature uh, uh, comes from uh, 770 BCE onwards, uh, it come, that is during uh, the spring and autumn period. And uh, the pentatonic scale, pentatonic scale um, had social symbolism. Um, uh, and this uh, in a hierarchy, uh, Gong uh, represents the lords, Shang represents officials, Jue uh, rep uh, represented people, Zhi represented business matters, and finally Yu rep represented things. Uh, temperament uh, was important uh, during in ancient China. Uh, each dynasty published standards for uh, pitch length, volume, and weight, with pitch taking pride of place. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit here about the tuning method for the pentatonic scale, which was, uh, which was known as the Sanfen Sun Yi methods, that translates as adding or subtracting by thirds. So for example, uh, we can take uh, um, the note C is produced uh, by a specific length of bamboo. If you uh, take the length of the bamboo and multiply it by two-thirds, you get a shorter pipe and a pitch that's a perfect fifth higher than C, which is G. If you take the G pipe and multiply it by a factor of four-thirds, uh, you get a longer pipe that produces a pitch that's a perfect fourth lower, which is D. And if you follow this alternation, uh, we eventually end up with the pentatonic scale C, D, E, G, A. And uh, why uh, add and subtract by thirds? So one minus a third is two thirds, and one plus a third is four thirds. So this is why it's called uh, Sanfen Sun Yi. The Sanfen Sun Yi method possibly predates Pythagorean tuning, and uh, this is a little piece of uh, global music history here. 
This is a chart showing uh, the 12 semitones. Uh, the names, uh, the Chinese names for each of these pitches and the derivation of each of these pitches uh, using the Sanfen Sun Yi method with the alternation between two thirds and four thirds. Uh, the pentatonic scale had a, a cosmological aspect to it, and this is related to the concept of the five phases or Wu Xing, uh, which arose during the spring and autumn period. The five phases uh, were used to explain uh, relations and changes in music, biology, medicine, politics, uh, military, strategy, martial arts, and feng shui. So these are the five phases, uh, which are actually elements. So that's earth, metal, wood, fire, and water. And they correspond to the five notes of the pentatonic scale, gong shang jue zhi yu, as well as the five organs, the five locations, the five flavors, five odors, and five colors. Uh, this is a chart of the 12 semitones matched to the 12 lunar months uh, from the zodiac uh, uh, and uh, the months are determined uh, relative to the position of Jupiter in the sky. Uh, and uh, the 12 semitones are also matched to hours of the day. And so uh, that's the cosmological aspect of the pentatonic skill. And finally, I want to talk about the social aspects of music, uh, the religious aspect, the philosophical aspects, and the moral and aesthetic aspect. Uh, sacrificial music uh, was performed to uh, contact departed ancestors in elaborate state and private musical rituals. Instruments were staged, tuned, and scored to accord with cardinal directions, points in the annual calendar, and the social status of a family. So for more important families, you would have larger ensembles. Uh, it is thought uh, that ritual divides in the sense that in ritual it's important to show uh, distinctions of social hierarchy. These differences actually contributed to social order at the start uh, because uh, by indicating higher and lower status, uh, there is less opportunity for uh, accidental, uh, the accidental uh, giving of offense. Uh, in contrast to ritual, which divides, it is thought that uh, music brings people together, uniting the different hierarchical levels. And this is a uh, Confucian idea. There were different philosophical uh, schools of thought about music, uh, but uh, one key idea is uh, that music brings about harmony. As we just saw uh, in Confucianism, which is codified uh, uh, around the 6th to 2nd century BCE, uh, it is thought that um, music could bring about harmony between different tiers of the social hierarchy. Taoism was codified at the same time, but the focus of Taoism is on harmony between man and nature. Uh, sounds in nature uh, include whistling wind, gurgling water, and animal cries, and individuals through cultivation can take their seat in the great harmony of nature. Uh, and finally, uh, uh, I want to talk about Confucian moral symbolism and music aesthetics. So in the Confucian school of thought, music ideally would be clear and simple, and this would encourage good social conduct. The music of Confucius's own state, the state of Lu, uh, which was located near the throne of the virtuous founders of the Zhou dynasty, was thought to exemplify the best of music traditions. Uh, this music was austere and restrained with no excessive sensuality that would distract from its moral core, according to the Confucian uh, school of thought. Conversely, Confucius identified the music of the state of Zheng, uh, which was complex and raucous, uh, with the decadent 
social and political conditions of that state, according to Confucius. Historical commentaries tell of state visits in which st sage advisors assess the moral worth of a potential military ally or opponent by listening carefully to musical performances on state occasions. In contemporary terms, we would refer to music. Uh, we, we can see that uh, music in ancient China was a part of ideological state apparatuses, meaning that music served political ideology. And that concludes my micro lesson. Thanks for watching.